Hey guys, back out in my shop and I'm going to start trying to finish up a little more on this uh, CNC router project. I got in the mail today my uh, couplings and my uh, Acme lead nuts, the anti-backlash nuts, and we'll talk about those a little bit more later. Um, but the first thing i got to do before I can start doing some more assembly is I've got to cut a few more parts. I've got to cut the... Uh, Z-axis motor mount, I've got to cut the Z-axis bearing mount, and the Y motor mount and the Y bearing mount, and I also have to cut a new um, uh, Y-axis, uh, the lead nut block here, because this one is one that's just like uh, this one here, and I really need to make it longer to, to get the uh, motor and everything out of the way of, of this gantry. So. I'm going to cut a new one of those and I can take this one off and I'm actually going to use it over here and now I won't have to cut another one because I was one short on that so I can use that there. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the CNC, cut a few parts and when I get done with that I'll turn the camera back on and we'll go through some of this assembly. Okay, I've got the Z motor mount mounted, cut and mounted on here and I've also got the Z bearing mount mounted on here and basically what you're trying to do is try to keep these where they're lined up. I hope you can see that, but right where the motor would come through, you want to try to get that where it's concentric with the bearing here that you've got for the, the bottom of the lead screw. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, now that I've got these put on, you'll also notice that I can't I can't put it on there because of because of this is in the way. So the easiest way to mount it once you get these put back on is to just loosen up these uh, adjustment screws here, push those two bearings over, then you can set it in there and, and use those uh, adjustment screws to tighten it back up. So left, what I got left is I've got to cut a couple of parts for the y-axis and uh, then I'll turn the camera back on and show you how that's going to work. Okay I've got the y-axis motor mount that part cut and I've also got the uh, bearing mount cut on the other side. And right now I've just I've got the back removed and you can see I've just got these clamped on here. And also know that you can see that there's a lot of extra holes here and this is basically just relief to go around the, the heads of these other screws and the dowel nuts and then I've got some relief here so that we'll go around the, uh, the nuts that stick through here that are holding these uh, y-axis rails on. So uh, got that uh, just kind of clamped on there for now. And I'm going to have to match drill these holes because I didn't add those into this when I uh, first drew it up. So I'm going to have to go back and add those holes in here as well. But you can kind of get an idea how this works. The motor mounts right here and you can kind of see how it lines right up through the uh, Acme nut block and also goes all the way through. So the shaft would basically go through like this. If the, you know, you have the coupling in here it would attach to the motor. And this would go through like this, and then you'd have your Acme nut that's going to move it back and forth, which I'll try to get one of those installed here in just a little bit. Okay, I want to take a minute to talk about these Acme nuts and couplings that I got here. These are from Dumpster CNC, and you can find out more about them uh, if you go to my website, www.cncsidewinder.com. Go to the Frequently Asked Questions and Links page. And you'll see Dumpster CNC on there, and if you just click on the name, it'll take you right to their web page, and you'll see how these work. But these are uh, Acme nuts, and the way they're anti-backlash, so they've got this spring on them, and you know they're really, really snug, and they take out all the slop. So you don't have, you know, like if you move this way, and all of a sudden it stops to move back, there's no little slop in there. It's a really tight. Uh, Fit and these things work great for uh, accuracy. Same way with the couplings, uh, just to give you an idea how they work, the, the thing I really like about these is these uh, NEMA 23 motors uh, have a quarter inch shaft on them, so he puts like half of the split coupling as a quarter inch so it will fit right on the shaft and you can just use these stainless screws here to tighten up that half. And then the other half well, he's got actually threaded instead of having it where you've got a quarter inch bore and you have to take your Acme screw and put it in a lathe and turn it down and all that. He's just tapped them where they match the same 
kind of lead screw so you can get them you know you can get them half by ten by five star two star you know whatever you're using for your CNC machine and these things are just absolutely fantastic because it's you know there's no thing you just get your lead screws you measure you cut them off you file the burrs off the end you screw it on like that tighten up the screws you're good to go nothing uh, you know just takes minutes to get get up and running uh, one thing I will say about these, these are made out of Delrin, so it is easy to crack them if you crank down on them too hard, especially if you crank, try to tighten one really hard and then go to the other one. You have to snug one up, go to the other one, snug it up, and just kind of, you know, go back just a little, you know, not even a quarter of a turn, you know, just a little bit. Go back and forth until you get it uh, tightened up evenly, and you don't need to tighten it very, very hard either. It's, uh, you know, don't torque down on it too much because you'll, you'll crack this Delrin. But those things work great, uh, so feel free to go to the website there and check them out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera back off here now. And I'm going to go ahead and, this is just a spare motor I have, but this is exactly like what I'm going to use. I haven't got those in. Hopefully they'll be in next week in the controller as well. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of mock one up here just so you can see one axis move and how it, and how it works. So I'm going to cut the camera off for a second, get that all installed, and then uh, I'll turn it back on and we'll talk about that. Okay guys, I got uh, I got the Z-axis kind of thrown together here, and I tell you what, this thing just really glides smooth, really happy with that. Uh, I got the Z-axis lead screw on, uh, I've got this little handle on here, I got the motor bolted through the, the motor mount here, I actually messed up and cut the lead screw a little long, so you know, if I was going to use this one I would cut it off where it's just about flush with the bottom of this or maybe even a little shorter than that. I miscalculated the length of the the half of the coupling which is what's about the difference sticking out there. But anyway I've got the uh, Acme nut sticking on there. You can see as I turn this it goes up and down. It's a little stiff simply because it's a brand new coupling. Uh, what I used to do uh, is I, I actually took a piece of the uh, Acme rod uh, you know, lead screw, and I turned some of this down on my lathe where I could chuck it up in my drill, and I would take those uh, cup, the uh, Acme nuts, and get one started, and I'd run it, you know, just hold it with my hand and run it back and forth to try to get it loosened up. You don't want to wear it out, obviously, because you do want it to be snug, but uh, it does make it a little hard to turn when you first put them on there. But uh, Z axis basically is complete. Uh, I've got a you know, finish attaching the uh, Y-axis mount. I've got the bearing already in here. Just have to get them attached and put the backpack on. I'm thinking what I may do is, since I have to match drill these holes, I think I may, uh, once I match drill them, I may enlarge the other hole and put like a T-nut on the inside of there. That way you could take this off without having to pull the back off and to get to a nut. Uh, so I think I may do that. Uh, just want to point one other thing out too, if anybody's wondering what this little slot is, uh, on the coupling, you've got to get to those little screws. So I made that slot where you can take your Allen wrench and you can now, you turn this just right there, and you can get to those screws to tighten or loosen them. So, you know, if this was closed up, you, you wouldn't, you'd have to space it out or up somehow or something like that. But this is an easier way of doing it without having to use a spacer. So I guess that's probably going to be it for this video. Uh, like I said, I'm hoping that the uh, controller and the, uh, the other stepper motors come in and because uh, I'd like to uh, either this week or whenever they get here, uh, I'll go ahead and make the uh, table. What I'm going to do is get some, probably just get some two befores and uh, you know, they're like three and a half inches wide and I'll just set up where I'm cutting about a quarter inch off each side to get a nice square three inch by one and a half inch uh, board. And I'll just kind of make a ladder frame, I guess, to go underneath the piece of plywood that's going to be the table. And then in the next video, I'll be showing you how to how to set up the angle on the on the table for the uh, to use that angle as the rails. I've got one by one by one eighth angle that uh, I just picked up today too. So. I'm ready to make the table. Basically, basically, I could probably have it finished here in just a little bit if I just had the uh, the controller and the motors. But uh, want to get everything else built and make sure it's uh, moving smooth. 
and uh, then we'll plug that thing in and uh, I'll should go through how to set it up and, and all that, which really isn't hard. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they can get, some people can build the CNC, but when it gets to the electronics, they don't know how to set it up and steps per inch and all that, and they just start freaking out, but it's really easy. Uh, and I'll, I'll go through that step by step and show you how. So anyway, that's going to do it for uh, this video. Uh, I'd like to thank again all my new subscribers. Man, it's, I'm like up over 4,000 now, and I think this time last year I had like 33 or something. So it's been it's been just awesome. Uh, you know, a lot of new subscribers. I really appreciate that. Had some people. Uh, if you haven't checked out my website, you know, I have a little uh, donation button on there because you know I do create plans and. Everything you see on my website, you can get the plans free. I don't, you know, ask for anything for getting the plans. But if you do get some and you find that they're useful and they're, they're worth a little something to you, uh, you know, I'd appreciate any donation that I could get. That helps me to uh, be able to keep doing this and keep everything free. Uh, you know, I, I just don't believe in uh, charging for plans, you know, no matter how much work I put into it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to share with other woodworkers and hopefully that they can enjoy making the same things I do and whether or not they make them exactly by the plans or not doesn't matter but uh, maybe it'll get them get them started but anyway I have had some people uh, you know do the donation thing and I really appreciate that and I appreciate all my new subscribers so until the next time we'll talk to you later